The Appalachian Mountains used to stand as an unofficial boundary between the American colonies and the frontier. In fact, both before and after the American Revolution, the territories west of Appalachia were fought over. Dating back to the first European settlers in the New World, wars between various Native American tribes and their allies happened often. Manifest Destiny was always looking to take the next hill westward. The Indians living in these territories were the main impediment to new settlements further than the original colonies. However, once the revolution was over, America focused its attention on expansion, which meant even more conflicts to come and difficult terrain to settle. John Sevier would be the main driving force that allowed Americans to begin settling the Appalachian Mountains permanently and eventually led to what is now Tennessee becoming a state. John Sevier was a politician, pioneer, soldier, and founding father of the state of Tennessee. He was responsible for leading revolutionary troops into battle against the British, then American troops against Native Americans in the area. Sevier would go on to become Tennessee's first governor and be largely responsible for the settlement of the new state of Tennessee. John Sevier was born in 1745 in a small town in Virginia called Newmarket. Sevier's father was a modest man who worked a few different trades. One of those happened to be a tavern keeper, which led to Sevier opening up his own tavern as a teenager. By the time John Sevier was 16, he was married to a woman named Sarah Hawkins and had settled down as a farmer. It is believed that his life as a farmer was short-lived though, as he fought in Lord Dunmore's war under the command of George Washington. Around this same time in the early 1770s, Sevier and his brother were frequent visitors to villages west of the Appalachian Mountains, specifically what would become Northeast Tennessee. He eventually moved his family there, but life only became more complicated for John Sevier. At this time, only a few years prior to the start of the Revolutionary War, Sevier had settled in a place that the British government did not officially recognize. In 1763, the British Crown declared that no one could settle the Indian land west of the Appalachian Mountains. Even though the settlers in what was then called Watauga settlements had fairly leased their lands from the Cherokee in the region, the British refused to recognize their settlements and considered them to be illegal. A famous Cherokee by the name of Dragon Canoe took advantage of this situation because he knew that the settlers wouldn't have any backup to defend their land. So Dragon Canoe began preparing himself and his tribesmen to take back the land they thought was rightfully theirs, even though it had been leased fair and square. Then, the American Revolution suddenly broke out, and the Watauga settlements found themselves with no home country that recognized them and no allies to aid them. John Sevier and the Watagans were known to align with the Patriots' cause, but they weren't part of any state, so they were on their own. The Watauga community put together a safety committee that Sevier was on that petitioned Virginia for annexation, but was refused. They planned on petitioning North Carolina next, but were interrupted by a Cherokee invasion supplied with British weapons. The Overmountain settlers, who would eventually become part of the Overmountain men later, built Fort Caswell to guard Watauga and Easton Station to guard settlements on the Holston River. In July of 1776, the Cherokee attacked, led by Dragon Canoe. The Cherokee entered into a two-week siege of Fort Caswell, but were beaten back by the militia. The Cherokee eventually entered into peace talks with the Watagans after a few months of skirmishes. This allowed John Sevier and the Watagans enough time to send delegates to North Carolina's Constitutional Convention to try to get annexation approved. Thus the new District of Washington was created by North Carolina, which included the majority of modern day Tennessee. John Sevier was promptly elected the new district representative in the state's House of Representatives and given the title of Lieutenant Colonel of the new Washington County Militia. John Sevier and his newly minted militia would be tested immediately as the British began their southern campaign to quell the revolution. John Sevier and the settlements both in Appalachia and west of Appalachia were sent a warning by Major Patrick Ferguson. He promised that if they took up arms against him, he would, quote, march over the mountains and lay waste to their country with fire and sword, end quote. Sevier and fellow militia commander Isaac Shelby teamed up to raise arms against the invading British troops. In September of 1780, the combined Appalachian forces, known as the Overmountain Men, planned to march across the mountains to meet Major Ferguson somewhere in the Carolinas. There was one problem. 
The nearly 1,000 man militia had neither the money nor the supplies to make the long march. So John Severe asked John Adair for a loan to fund the expedition. Adair agreed, although only if Severe put up his own house as collateral against the loan. The march took a couple of weeks, but by October 7th, the Mover Mountain men had surrounded Ferguson and his troops on a small hilltop in present-day South Carolina called Kings Mountain. Severe was positioned on the south flank of Ferguson, taking heavy fire from the Loyalist troops. After the initial charge by the Patriots failed, Severe gathered his troops and successfully charged to the top of the mountain, taking a huge advantage over the enemy. That's when Ferguson tried to take his men through Severe's line but was killed during the charge, leaving his troops to surrender shortly after. The Overmountain men won a great victory that day, as the Patriots had been on a losing streak in the Carolinas against Cornwallis' main army. This victory turned the tide of the Southern Campaign and eventually led to Cornwallis' surrender in Yorktown a bit later. As soon as Severe and his men returned from battle, their old foe the Cherokee was at their doorstep ready to attack. Two months after King's Mountain, Severe was fighting at the Battle of Boyd's Creek near Sevierville, where he destroyed Cherokee forces with ease. Days later, he was joined by Arthur Campbell and his Virginia militia. Both militias marched south, burning Cherokee cities such as Chilhawe, Tallahassee, Great Owasi, and Chistoe. In February of 1781, Severe was promoted and chosen to lead another war party, but this time on the eastern side of the Smokies near present-day Bryson City. Severe and his troops would go on to capture the Cherokee village of Tuckasegee and destroy another dozen or more Cherokee settlements before returning home. Over a year later in the fall of 1782, Severe would meet his old enemy Dragon Canoe in a battle near Lookout Mountain. Severe won the day and the local Cherokee chief sued for peace. The newly created county of Washington included most of the territory of present day Tennessee and it was constantly in turmoil. If it wasn't Cherokee wars, it was political wars. John Severe confronted the next batch of conflict in 1784 when North Carolina decided to give Washington County to the federal government. However, Congress never acted on the land grant. So the people of what was formerly Washington County, North Carolina decided to make moves of their own. In August of 1784, they convened a committee to discuss the establishment of a new state. The new state would be named Franklin in honor of Benjamin Franklin. With John Severe elected as the new governor of this proposed state, Franklin seemed to be ready to govern on its own. That is, until North Carolina decided that they did in fact want to keep the Tennessee region annexed into North Carolina. This created a split in the loyalties of the Washington County region. Severe and his government laid their claims, while a government led by a man named John Tipton claimed dominion over the region. Legally, two opposing governments were operating in Tennessee. In 1785, to secure more land for the young state of Franklin, Severe signed multiple treaties with the Cherokee that expanded Franklin's land all the way to the Little Tennessee River. With this new land, Severe created the modern counties of Cock County, Sevier County, and Blount County. The federal government refused to certify these treaties, however, which meant an even more confusion about who owned which territory would ensue. In 1788, Severe and his new rival John Tipton would go up against each other at the Battle of Franklin. Tipton ordered Severe's slaves to be seized to pay back taxes to North Carolina. In response, Severe marched his men up to Tipton Farm, where a long standoff ensued. Luckily for Tipton, the Sullivan County Militia arrived to back him. Some gunfire was exchanged and some prisoners were captured, but Severe retreated before his forces could be destroyed. During the same summer, the Cherokee killed settlers in what was later called the Nine Mile Creek Massacre. Severe decided to go on a short campaign where he burnt many Cherokee villages to the ground in response. After Severe had a skirmish with a store owner in Jonesboro, Tipton took advantage of the situation and arrested Severe for treason. He never went to trial, though, as he was pardoned by the governor and quickly re-elected to North Carolina's state senate. Severe quickly used his political acumen to change the course of the political climate. After helping North Carolina to ratify the U.S. Constitution, he passed a bill that would give the present-day lands of Tennessee back to the federal government. This would be the second time the federal government owned this land. On the heels of this transfer of land, Congress would create the Southwest Territory. A few years later, in 1793, 
Sevier would return to war against the Cherokee after they attacked Cabot's station near Knoxville. He defeated the Cherokee again, which caught the ire of George Washington. Washington appointed Sevier to the equivalent of the Southwest Territory's version of a state senate and was then appointed to be on the first board of trustees of Blount College, which would eventually become the University of Tennessee. In 1796, the Southwest Territory officially became Tennessee, which was the 16th state. It would be the first state created from federal lands. John Sevier was elected the first governor of Tennessee, and he quickly jumped into action. His goal was to acquire as much land from the Cherokee as possible. As governor, Sevier established the second Masonic Lodge in Tennessee. He ended up serving three terms as governor and would have won a fourth if not for term limits. A young politician by the name of Andrew Jackson became John Sevier's biggest rival. This rivalry would consume a lot of Sevier's time after Tennessee gained statehood. The two were to have several encounters over the years. The first would be after Sevier's inauguration in 1803. Jackson would accuse Sevier of committing adultery with Jackson's new wife, Rachel Donaldson. Andrew Jackson challenged John Sevier to a duel, but Sevier stalled in Campbell Station. Jackson eventually caught up to Sevier and the two men insulted each other until Jackson pulled a pistol on Sevier. No shots were fired, and the two went their separate ways after that. After his time as governor, John Sevier became a state senator from Knox County. During the War of 1812, he was offered command by President Madison, but he turned it down. A few years later, John Sevier would die while surveying lands in the Alabama Territory. He was originally buried near Fort Decatur, but his remains were moved to be finally laid to rest at the Knox County Courthouse. As was the case with many of his contemporaries, John Sevier was a hardy pioneer who exuded the promise of manifest destiny. He was respected as both a politician and a commander. Without his dedication to his state separate from North Carolina, Tennessee might not exist today. Sevier's legacy can be seen simply from his namesake, such as Sevier County, Sevierville, Sevier Avenue, and many more landmarks. <laughs>